as you go to your game today and understand that Jesus Christ he is King he is Lord he is Savior of the whole world especially of those you who believe add, you need to add Albert to that right there. no sir but if you're an idolater of any of any team, sir, that makes you un not right with God. So if you're here today to idolize the Alabama Crimson Tide or the Georgia Bulldogs, you need to understand, idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. As you go about your time today, I understand the average ticket to today's game costs over $800. That's the average game ticket price. Surely you can find something better to do with $800 than spend it on a football game. No dogs! The Bible says the dogs will be outside the city. The dogs going to be in the stadium, baby. They'll be outside the city, though. Yeah, they'll, you're right. They'll be in the stadium, but what good does it do you to be, out, to be in the stadium if you're outside the city of God? The dogs will be outside the city. And the Bible doesn't make reference to a crimson, something crimson, but it's not the crimson tide. It's the crimson blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they're red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So it gives a reference to crimson as far as the stain of sin. And only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away the stain of your sin. The crimson blood, the crimson flood that pours from his side of Jesus Christ. Only that can wash away your sins. But you need to understand, here in the South, there's so many people who call themselves Christians. They say they love Jesus Christ, but their life tells a different story. If you claim to know Jesus, if you claim to love Jesus, but you're living in sin, you're in danger. If you're really concerned about saying Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays, but you're not obeying God, your Merry Christmas will do you no good. The Bible makes it clear that hypocrites will be outside the kingdom, and no amount of church attendance, no amount of saying a sinner's prayer, asking Jesus into your heart, or getting baptized will make you right with God. You understand? You need to, you need to repent of your sin. Turn from your sins. Live a life that's pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible makes it clear that drunkards will not inherit his kingdom. That fornicators will not inherit his kingdom. That idolaters will not inherit his kingdom. Don't be deceived. So many people in the South think they're Christians just because they go to a building on Sundays. That's not true. You're no more a Christian by going to a certain building on Sundays and Wednesdays than you are a Whopper by going to Burger King or a Chick-fil-A, a chicken sandwich by going to Chick-fil-A. Doesn't make you right with God. The Bible makes it clear. Now by this, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God abides in him. So you need the love of God. You need Jesus Christ. You need to forsake your sins, turn from your sins, turn to Jesus Christ. You know, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, this game will be forgotten. This game has no eternal value intrinsically. But what you do with this man named Jesus Christ who died for you, that has eternal value. What you do with his gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, has eternal value. 
and God is calling you to repentance, turning from your sin, forsaking your sin. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. The Bible says, fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. The, the outcome of this game today will matter not on judgment day. The outcome of this game today will matter not in eternity. If you have a chance to have a deathbed, you won't be thinking about this game. You'll be thinking about wishing you could have watched more games and gone to more games and drank more beer. You won't be thinking about that if you're about to die. But Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, He died for you. He laid down His life for you into the hands of lawless men who beat Him, who bruised Him, who crucified Him. He was dead. He was buried. He rose from the grave on the third day, defeating death. And now he commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Christ will return and he will judge the world in righteousness. Are you ready for the return of Jesus Christ? Are you ready for him to return? He says, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Jesus Christ, he died for you. He was not born on December 25th, but his birthday does not necessarily matter. What matters is what you do with this man named Jesus. He's no longer in a major. He's no longer on a cross. He sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will judge the living and the dead. God commands all men everywhere to repent, because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Do you understand? It's going to judge the world in righteousness. And all your beer guzzling, all your potty mouth, all your football idolatry will not do you any good on Judgment Day. You'll wear a man's name on your back, but you won't follow Jesus. You wear your school's letter on your head, but you won't follow Jesus. Why is that? Why is that? Why do you care more about the Georgia Bulldogs than Jesus Christ? Why do you care more about the Alabama Crimson Tide than Jesus Christ? Has Alabama died for you? Have the Georgia Bulldogs offered you salvation through their shed blood? No, they offer you games. They offer you drunkenness. They offer you fleshly fun. But then they offer you hellfire with them. That's where sin leads. Sin leads to hell. Don't end up in hell because of your sin. Whether your sin is sexual immorality or drunkenness or a filthy mouth or idolatry, your sin will cost you your soul. Your sin earns you a place in the everlasting lake of fire. That's where sinners will go. That is God's judgment place for sinners. That's what you will earn for your sin. And the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord the lord jesus christ offers you eternal life as a free gift but they must you must receive the free gift of eternal life on the terms jesus christ has set and the terms he has set of repentance and faith the bible says repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out, that times of refreshing 
might come from the presence of the Lord. He offers you times of refreshing from his presence. He offers to blot out your sins, forgive you of your sins, but you got to repent. You got to go and sin no more. You can't hold on to your sin and call yourself a Christian. You can't hold on to your sin and expect to be right with God, enter into his kingdom. No drunkard shall enter his kingdom. No sexually immoral person will enter his kingdom. No liar, no thief, no idolater will enter his kingdom. He calls you to repent of all those things. He calls you to turn from your sins. That's what Christ calls you to do. He said, go and sin no more. What sin is so important to you that you'll cling on to it straight to your death, straight to the grave, and end up in hell in the end? What sin is so important to you that you'll go to hell forever for it? Yes, your sports idolatry, your dog idolatry. Go dogs! Don't be saying go dogs in hell, sinner. You'll be saying, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Why did I repent? But you'll be saying in hell. Thanks for showing your true colors, you wicked woman. Why don't you go stand in our street corner instead? Flashing your backside to me. Shame on you, you harlot. Shame on you, you wicked woman. And why is it that all these women are dressed, well, not all of them, but a good percentage of the women out here today are dressed so immodestly? Dressing like they belong on a street corner. Why is that at a football game? Think about it. Why is that? Well, they want to flaunt their body. They want men to look at their body. They want men to lust after their bodies. They want to control the minds of men. But Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It's more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. You can't love Jesus and be a sinner. You can't, you can't love Jesus and be a drunkard. Sorry, not the way it works. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So Jesus said, you can't love Jesus and be a drunkard at the same time. You can't love Jesus and be a sports idolater at the same time. So the question becomes, how do I know I'm a sports idolater? Because going to a game doesn't make you a sports idolater. But answer these questions for yourself. How much money and time do you spend on sports? How much money and time do you spend on Jesus, his word and prayer and evangelizing? How much money and time do you spend memorizing your favorite player's stats? And how much money and time do you spend memorizing the Bible, sharing the scriptures? That will reveal to you who your true God is. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas won't help you on Judgment Day. You need to repent. Saying Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays won't help you on Judgment Day. And newsflash, Jesus wasn't born December 25th anyway. He was born in September or October. We don't know the exact day of his birth, but he was not born in December. It's real funny when you celebrate someone's birthday on the wrong day. If your birthday is in March, let's celebrate it in June. Yay! And let's be covetous for ourselves and give ourselves presents in June on your birthday. That's what God wanted for his son's birthday. He wants you to be covetous. You know, December 25th is not the birthday of Jesus. It's National Covetousness Day. Everyone covets for months ahead of time what they want to be given on December 25th. Parents, it's the most universal lie there is that parents lie to their children about Santa Claus. And it's not pretend, you're actually deceiving them, they believe you. And then at some point in time in the future when they figure it out or you finally confess you've been lying to them all these years, what do you think they're gonna say? Do you think they're gonna trust you all this time when everybody was in on this lie about Santa Claus? Of course not. For liars, the Bible says every liar shall have his part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So even if Jesus was born on December 25th, even if we were celebrating his birthday then, the way to celebrate Jesus' birthday is not with covetousness and lies and idolatry. 
The way to celebrate Christ's birth is humility, repentance, and faith. That's the true way to celebrate the birth of Christ. You know, God gave the greatest gift in the world in his son. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already. He's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know, if people really believed they were celebrating Jesus' birthday on December 25th, they wouldn't be giving each other gifts. They wouldn't be covetous. They wouldn't be lying to their children about Santa Claus. They wouldn't put up trees in their house. What does any of that have to do with Jesus? Nothing nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus commands humility. He gives grace to the humble, but he opposes. He is against the proud. The Bible says covetous people are idolaters. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Do not be a partaker with sons and daughters of disobedience. Be obedient to Jesus, not your flesh, not the world, not the devil. Follow Jesus Christ. He will lead you to eternal life. Jesus Christ didn't lead you to be a fanatic for the dogs or the crimson tide. Jesus Christ didn't tell you to be that way. That's your own doing. Maybe you were raised that way. That's not the doing of Jesus Christ. You know, back before I became a Christian, I was a sports fanatic. You know, everything there was to know about four, the four different major sports. When I turned from my sins and turned to Christ by faith, he changed me. And those things I loved so much, I no longer desired at all. Because Jesus Christ did something inside of me to change me, to make me new. And the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All the old things have passed away. And behold, all has become new. That's what Jesus Christ wants to do in your life. He wants to make all things new. He wants to change you and transform you from a sinner to someone who is holy, from someone who is disobedient to someone who is obedient. That's what Jesus Christ wants for you. What's it going to take to get you to come to your senses and give up your sin? What's it going to do to come to your senses? What's it going to take to get you to come to your senses and give up your unbelief and believe upon the gospel of Jesus Christ? What's it going to take? Yes, devil horns. Thank you for revealing your true colors with your devil horns. Thank you. Thank you. And the Bible says, where it commits sin is a slave to sin, and a slave will not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever therefore if the son sets you free you shall be free indeed Christ wants to set you free Christ wants to deliver you but you have to lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So many people deceive themselves, thinking they're right with God, thinking they have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but they're living a wicked life. Christ will not be in relationship with those who continue to reject him, Christ will not be in relationship with those who continue to live unholy lives.
don't perish in your sins. Turn from your sins. Turn in faith to Jesus Christ. He loved you at the cross. He died for you. He laid down his life for you. But most of you couldn't care less what Jesus Christ did for you. Is that supposed to be an insult, sir? Test, test. Are we Amish? Why, because we don't dress like harlots? We're Amish now? No, no, not, not go dogs. Dogs are outside the kingdom. Go Jesus. Follow Jesus. Who cares? Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. Ah. He's having so many problems. <laughs> So what are you doing with this man named Jesus today? Are you following him? Are you obeying him? Are you disobeying him and loving the dogs and the crimson tide instead? The Bible says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Many of you today, when you go to this, this game, you're going to get angry at some point. You're going to get frustrated at the calls of the referees. No, not go dogs. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. Who cares about the dogs? Go Jesus. The dogs didn't die for you. Jesus died for you. The Crimson Tide didn't die for you. Jesus died for you. You don't know what love is, sir. You don't know what love is, sir. You don't know what love is. Drinking a beer? Drinking a beer? You're a Christian drinking a beer, getting drunk? Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. You sports idolater. Shame on you. Shame on you. Hey, spend your $800 on a football game, man. Watch your filthy mouth. Test, 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 test. It's amazing how many people come to this game claiming to be Christians with a fear in their hand, filthy language in their mouth, and dressed the way they're dressed. It's amazing how delusional and how blind some people are. The scriptures make it clear in Titus 1. They profess to know God, but in works deny Him. Being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every work. No, no, just, just go Jesus. Just go Jesus. No dogs, no crimson tide, just Jesus. Absolutely not. For no, interest. no, he's cheering for you to repent. Jesus wants people to get injured. He, no, I didn't say that. He, I, he wants you to repent. He's concerned about your soul, sir. He wants you to repent, get right with God, and follow him in holiness. He's not concerned about men running around in tights with their plated pigskin, trying to cross the white line. God isn't concerned about men running around in tights with an inflated pigskin, trying to cross a white line. It's so shameful the way some of you act and some of you dress claiming to be Christians. You ought to be, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're deceiving yourself. So many people are deceiving themselves. 
thinking they're right with God when they're not. I'll say it again, Titus 1.16, they profess to know God, but in works deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. But the scripture says, so many of you profess to know God, but your works absolutely deny Jesus Christ. The way you live shows you don't know Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus Christ, Jesus said you should know them by their fruit. Jesus said either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. And then Jesus says this, brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? By the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. And then Jesus said this, and I say unto you that for every idle word men may speak, they'll give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, those are the words of Jesus Christ. Do you reject his words? Are you apathetic towards the words of Jesus Christ, the one who died for you? Jesus Christ loves you. Well, I know he does. But the question, the question is, do you love Jesus? There's no question Jesus loved you at the cross. The question is, do you love him back by giving your life to him, surrendering all to him, forsaking your sins, and living obedient to Jesus Christ? That's how you show you love Jesus. So many people claim to know Jesus. So many people claim to love Jesus, but they're deceiving themselves. I've seen people walk by today, guzzling their beer, saying they love Jesus, cheering for the Crimson Tide, saying they love Jesus, cheering for the dogs, and saying they love Jesus. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. God bless you. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters, for either you will love the one and hate the other, or else you'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in riches. And really put anything in the place of riches. You cannot serve God and anything else. So many of you, your master is a football game. Your master is a sports team. Your master is stuff. For so many of you, that's what your master is. The only one worthy to be your master is Jesus Christ. The only one fit to be your master is Jesus Christ. Jesus loves me. Do you love him? That's the question. How do you prove that? The words aren't enough. Anyone can say they love Jesus. The words are not enough. You shall know a tree by its fruit. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. So the Bible says, so many of you will walk by today and you'll say you love Jesus, you'll say you know Jesus, you'll say you're a Christian, but your life says otherwise. Your life tells on you. Your fruit shows you what you really are. And you won't be able to fool God on Judgment Day. You can fool other people. You can fool other people thinking you're right with God. But you're not. What's not true? You can fool other people into thinking you're right with God when you're really not. It's a dangerous place to be. You know, Jesus talked about this in Matthew 7. Many will say to me on that day, did I do cast out demons in your name, perform any wonders and miracles in your name? And Jesus will say to them, away from me, you evildoers, I never knew you. The two problems these people had who claimed to know Jesus, who claimed to do mighty works in his name, they did not know him ever, and they were wicked. 
So how do we know that we know Jesus? Because anyone can claim with their mouth that they know Jesus. How does someone know really that they know Jesus? Once again, now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So practically speaking, what does that mean? Because if you're a liar, you don't love Jesus. You are a drunkard. You need to repent. No, God didn't want you to drink, sinner. Don't blame it on God. It's your fault. You're it's your fault. And that same Jesus will condemn you to hell for being a drunkard. The same Jesus who turned water into wine will condemn you to hell for being a drunkard. It's like saying, well, Jesus gave me a computer. I should use it for pornography. Nope. Not the way it works. You'll have no one to blame on Judgment Day for your sins. You'll have no excuse for your sins on Judgment Day. And the Bible makes it clear, he that condemns the just and he who justifies the wicked, both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. Both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Throw this so backwards. There's so many people who are so backwards in our world that think sin is good and righteousness is evil. Is that you? Is that you? Do you think sin is good and righteousness is evil? You'll walk around with your jerseys on and your hats on, but will you promote Jesus? That's the question. Let's see where your heart really is, those who claim to be Christians. Will you promote Jesus Christ? Will you spend that average ticket today to this game is over $800. When's the last time you spent $800 promoting the gospel, furthering the gospel of Jesus Christ? When's the last time you, you spent $800 helping the poor? You see, so people, you can tell where their heart is at by how they live their lives, how they spend their money, how they spend their time, what comes out of their mouth, what they're promoting, what cause they're trying to further. I see lots of G's and A's today, but no J's, no Jesus. Lots of G's, lots of A's, promoting Georgia, promoting Alabama, but where's the promotion of Jesus Christ in his gospel? Because Jesus Christ did not say, go into all the world and promote Georgia football. Jesus Christ did not say, go into all the world and promote Alabama Crimson Tide football. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's what Jesus said. That's the great commission of Jesus. But the way some of you are so zealous for your favorite football team, you'd think Jesus Christ said, go into all the world and go to football games. You'd think he said that. All the money and time and affection and energy you put into this. I mean, average of over $800 a ticket, parking's probably $50 a car, all the time and energy you spent coming here. You'll be here for three hours, spending exorbitant amounts on overpriced food and drinks. For what? To watch men in tights carry an inflated pigskin over a white line? That's what you're spending all this money on? What you're spending it all for? Is for that? You know, the Bible talks about a crimson something in the scripture. Crimson in the scripture, Isaiah 1 is talking about sin. And the dogs will be outside the city, Jesus said. Bible makes it clear in Revelation 22. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they might have the right to the tree of life and to enter into the city. But outside us there are dogs, uh oh, and sorcerers, and sexually immoral, and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices a lie. Those are the ones who will be outside the city of God. It's amazing the way people use their time today you think they would have the way most of you use your time today you think you'd have an exorbitant amount of time left you think you would had all the time in the world we all only have 24 hours a day and seven days a week the average age of death is 75 years old what are you doing with your life that's going to matter 200 years from now 
what are you doing with your life that's going to matter when you step into eternity and stand before the judgment seat of Christ? What are you doing with your life? The Bible says, see then that you walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. What the scripture says, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. That's your life. Your life eventually is going to vanish away. And most of you aren't spring chickens anymore either. Your life's going to vanish away. And then what will become of you? What will happen to your life then? When you stand before God, they give an account of your life. Have you been spent for the glory of God and for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or for the gospel of the Georgia Bulldogs? Have you spent and spent yourself for the gospel of Jesus Christ or for the gospel of the Crimson Tide? Because the way most of you are dressed today, you're, you're out promoting these, these two football teams, but I don't see anyone promoting Jesus Christ. Who really died for you? Who's really your God? Who do you really live for? The Lord Jesus Christ? Or for the Georgia Bulldogs and the Alabama Crimson Tide? So it's a foolish way to use your life. I was a sports idolater, a sports fanatic myself for quite some time. But I became a follower of Jesus Christ. I gave that up. I gave it up. Now that it's a sin to watch a sports game or to play a game. But when your life is so focused, so infatuated with men in tights running around with an inflated pigskin trying to cross the white line, you know there's something wrong. But this breaks down to grown men in tights with an inflated pigskin trying to cross a white line or kick it between two yellow poles and then running into a door like crazy in the meantime in between those things. That's really what you're so infatuated about? That's what you're so excited about? There's nothing to be excited about there. But Jesus Christ, that's something to be excited about. He died for you. Have a great day. He loved you at the cross. There's no man who loved you like Jesus loved you. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. No one has loved you like Jesus. Jesus doesn't use you, fornicate with you, and throw you to the side. Doesn't use you and abuse you and throw you to the side like you don't matter. He made you. He created you. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. And then he died for you. And you are a sinner. You've broken God's law hundreds, thousands of times. And yet Jesus Christ still died for you. So Jesus Christ didn't die for good people. Jesus Christ didn't die for you because you deserve it. Or because you earned it somehow. Jesus Christ died for you because you needed it and because he loved you at the cross. He offers his mercy to you through his shed blood. He offers you his grace through his shed blood, but you gotta repent. You gotta give up your sin. You cannot have your sin and have Jesus. You gotta let go of your sin which will weigh you down right into hell. You gotta cut the chain and cling to the cross of Christ which is the only way by which you can be saved. The only way by which you can ha receive the mercy and grace of God is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And you need to understand, though this is prevalent in the South, you need to understand that going to a building on Sunday will not make you right with God. Asking Jesus into your heart and there being no change in your life does not make you right with God. Praying a sinner's prayer, but there be no transformation in your life does not make you right with God. See, when Jesus Christ comes into someone's life, he utterly transforms them. 
He changes them. He delivers them from their sin. That's what Jesus Christ does. He changes you. I'm not inviting you to my church building. I'm not inviting you to join a certain denomination. I'm talking about a man named Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin. He had an existence before that birth. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. So Jesus Christ came into the world. He's born of a virgin. But he also had a pre-existence before that. He existed long before he was came into this world, born of a virgin. He performed many miracles and signs and wonders, attesting to who he was in the flesh, the Son of God, God the Son. He preached the truth to thousands of people. And then he laid his life down to the hands of lawless men who beat him who bruised him, who crucified him, who mocked him, who spit upon him, who punched him in the face. This is what Jesus Christ went through for you at the cross. He was dead. He was buried. And the third day he rose from the grave defeating death. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father awaiting for the appointed time for him to return. And he commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. On that day, Jesus will cancel all culture counter to him. On that day, everyone will wake up. You'll be woke to the fact of Jesus Christ. No matter how much you've ignored him in this world, someday you'll be woke to the fact that Jesus Christ is going to return to judge the living and the dead. And he will judge you according to his standard of righteousness. And on that day, sin will be canceled. Everything in this culture that's counter to Jesus Christ and his word, when he returns, will be canceled by Jesus Christ. Because he will rule this world with a rod of iron. He will rule this world with a rod of iron. And he will judge you for your works. He will judge you for the way you live, for things you've said, for what you've thought about, for what you've dwelt upon, for what you've th thought about. God will judge those things in your life. Don't deceive yourselves. Get right with God. Get right with God while you still can. Don't remain in your sins and end up in hell in the end. Rather repent, turn to Christ, and live. That's your only option. He's your only hope. Jesus Christ is your only hope. Hey, bro. What's going on? What you been doing? Just uh, handing out golf sticks down there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage you to put down your Bible, put down your bottle of beer, pick up your Bible, read it, and heed it. That's right, put down your can, your bottle of beer, pick up your Bible, read it, and heed it. Many of you, you put down your Bible to pick up the beer today. So you read your Bible today, and now you're picking up your beer. You're picking up your beer and guzzling down your beer. Well, someone who's truly a child of God has the water of life spring up within them. Not a, not a sin to drink, it's a sin to get drunk. Well, stop getting drunk. Stop justifying your drunkenness. You know, there's one way you can ensure you'll never get drunk. Don't drink. There's one way you can ensure you'll never drive drunk. Don't drink. God is calling you to repentance. He's calling you to faith. There's no good reason to continue in your sin. There's no good reason to go to hell for your sins. Get right with God. Turn from your sin. 
turn to Jesus Christ. He died for you at the cross. He loves you at the cross. He offers you his mercy, his grace. He offers to all. The Bible says this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, if you men would uh, trade your, your bottles of beer, your, your, your cups of beer for a Bible, and you'd take heed unto it and read it and obey it, you'd see you never need another beer again, another drop of alcohol again. I used to be a drunkard. When I became right with God, he changed me. He delivered me. He made me new. That's what Christ wants to do for you. You don't have to be a drunkard anymore. You don't have to be a fornicator anymore. You don't have to smoke weed anymore. You don't have to have filthy words come out of your mouth anymore. You don't have to be a sports idolater anymore. Jesus Christ can free you from all your sin. He can deliver you from all your sin. He's a savior who's mighty to save. He can save to the uttermost, no matter how big your sin is. No matter how great your sin is, you. Christ can save. Christ can deliver. But you got to want it. You. you know, God has given you free will. And your free will, God allows you to make choices. But he doesn't allow you to choose the consequences for your choices. Don't deceive yourself about that. God has already determined the consequences for your choices. He's already determined those things. So while God has given you free will, He expects you to use your free will properly. He expects you to use your free will rightly to love Him, to serve Him, to obey Him, to read His Word, to meditate upon His Word, and think about His Word. Jesus Christ. He loved you at the cross. He loved you at the cross. Won't you love him back by giving him your life, by living for him instead of yourself and your sin and the devil? The Bible says in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love God his brother so many people claiming to be Christians claiming to be followers of Jesus Christ a child of God but Jesus said you must be born again judge not and you shall not be judged I don't mind being judged sir you got a judgment coming though sir I hope you're ready for it because God's judgment is much more harsh than mine you know that judge not thing won't work on judgment day and if you think judging is a sin, then God's the most judgmental being in the universe. He's the biggest sinner in the universe, too, if judging is sin. But God will judge this world. I'm simply here to declare to you how he will judge it. And your judge not claims will not dismiss what I'm saying. And your claims that judge not, telling me I can't judge, will not stop the truth from being true. That's the sinner's favorite line. Judge not, judge not. Really what you're saying is let me sin in peace. That's what you're saying. Leave me alone and let me sin in peace. Well, maybe the problem is your conscience isn't working any longer. Your conscience is given to you by God. Maybe it's not working any longer. So maybe I'm here to wake your conscience up. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore the word of God. Don't ignore the conscience God has given you. Rather repent. If you know you're doing wrong, repent and do what is right. If you know you're not doing what is right, repent and start doing it. And in James 4, 17, this is what it says. To him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Repent. Crimson Tide and dogs won't matter on Judgment Day. This game will not matter in eternity. 
You won't even be thinking about this game 10 years from now, let alone 100 years from now or 200 years from now when you're in eternity. You won't be thinking about this Bulldogs Crimson Tide game. You'll see how insignificant and inconsequential this game is in light of eternity at that point. But why wait until then? Why not get your priorities straight now? Why not put your focus where it belongs? Upon the one who died for you. The one who calls all men everywhere to repent. The one who rose from the grave defeating death. The one who's going to return to judge the living and the dead. Put your focus on him. Give him preeminence and priority in your life. For he is truly what matters. Not these, not these young men who are running around with tights on and an inflated pigskin in your hand trying to cross a white line. That matters not. And it won't matter on Judgment Day either. Won't matter on Judgment Day. Put down your bottles of beer, your cans of beer. Put them in a the trash where they belong pour them out on the ground, that's what they're good for, and pick up your Bible and read it and heed it. I know most of, you have, most of you have Bibles at home, I know you do, but they're probably collecting dust on your bookshelf or on your nightstand, or if you are reading them, you're surely not taking heed unto them. If you're taking heed unto the Word of God, surely you wouldn't spend an average of $800 per ticket today. How much the average ticket cost today to this game? $800 per ticket. Surely there's something better you can think to do with those $800 today than spend it on a ticket. Surely there's something better you can do with your time than spend your money on overpriced drinks and food. I'm telling you what God says. You have to answer to God what you do with your money. I didn't say it was God. You have to answer to God what you do with your money, ma'am. You sure have a big mouth. You got no clue what God says. Yeah, I do. It's in the Bible. You know exactly what God says. It's in the Bible. That's right. The Bible says a godly woman learns in silence. 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 And there's your middle finger. You got something to do? There's your middle finger? Shame on you, you wicked woman. Shame on you. Shame on you. Repent. Repent. Yes, I'm here to tell you what God says. It's found in the Bible. You'd think people in the South would know that by now. But God says it's in the Bible. And the Bible is God's word. And no amount of disagreement with it will change the facts. Your disagreeing with the truth does not make the truth go away. Your disagreement with the truth will not make it go away. Yeah, God wants to bless you with repentance. God wants to bless you with holiness. He already did. So says the loud mouth woman. Well, he already loves me. I so says the loud mouth man. Do you, do you love him though? Do you love him though? By obeying him? By obeying him? Do you love him by keeping his commandments? Yes, obviously not by what I'm doing. Because many of you here today, you're, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be caught dead doing what I'm doing because you don't care about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You care more about the gospel of the dogs and the gospel of the Crimson Tide. Or well, at, least, at least you're being honest, sinner. At least you're being honest. At least you're being honest. You care more about men running around in tights with an inflated pigskin trying to cross the white line than about the one who died for you. About the one who died for you. You care more about these young men running around with tights on with an inflated pigskin than you care about the one who died for you. The one who died for us would like football too. No, he wouldn't. He's against your violence. He's against your violence and your idolatry and your beer guzzling and your immodest dress. Jesus is against all of those things. And no amount of church going will change the facts of what the Word of God says. God calls you to repent. God calls you to repent, to turn from your sin, to go and sin no more. That's what God calls you to do. But too many of you care more about the Georgia Bulldogs and the Alabama Crimson Tide than about the Lord Jesus Christ. None of these men died for you. None of these men died for you. 
you won't be saved by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who died for you. He's the one who offers you eternal life through his shed blood. Not the Bulldogs, not the Crimson Tide, not Nick Saban. They didn't die for you. So many of you see them as a savior of sorts. You get so upset when your team loses. You get so excited when your team wins. Is that the way life is supposed to be? See, when you're with Jesus Christ and on his side, you never lose. Jesus Christ is the victorious one. Jesus Christ will never lose. The devil will always lose to Jesus Christ. And Jesus cared enough about you today, not just 2,000 years ago, but today, to send these preachers, these people here today, to tell you the truth, that you might wake up, that you might come to your senses and give up all the sports idolatry, all the drunkenness, all the filthy mouth, all the lying, all the lust, to give it all up and follow the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's worthy of your life. He's worthy of your worship. Jesus Christ, not the Crimson Tide, not the Georgia Bulldogs. They're not worthy of your worship and all your money and all your time and all your attention and affection. Jesus Christ is, though. Jesus Christ died for you. And then he rose from the grave, defeating death. And he's going to return again to judge the living and the dead. Jesus said, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. There's the dividing line. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Jesus Christ said, I will send out my angels and they will gather out of my kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. God wants you to have ears to hear. I'm not talking about those pieces of flesh on the sides of your head. I'm talking about paying attention, not being apathetic towards the Word of God, hearing what God commands you to do, and turning to Him by faith, being saved, becoming born again, being delivered from your sins. The Bible says that Christ wants to deliver you from the kingdom of darkness, and convey you into the kingdom of the Son of His love, and whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. That's what God wants to do for you. That's why He sent Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus Christ to destroy the works of the devil. That's sin. He sent Jesus Christ to die for sinners. That's you, unrighteous. But Christ can save you. You won't have to be a sinner any longer. You can be holy. You can be righteous. You can be what God wants you to be. That's what God wants for you. But Christ will return. The day coming up sh soon where people supposedly celebrate the day of his birth. They'll have nativity scenes. And then in March they'll celebrate the day of his death. People celebrate Christ's birth and his death, but I, I'm here to tell you, he's no longer in a, in a manger, no longer on a cross. His next big event is returning, and some of you are not ready for it. You're not ready for his return. How do I know that? Because you're living in sin. You love your sin. And if you love your sin, you're not ready to stand before God. You're not ready for the return of Jesus Christ. But you can become ready. You can be delivered from your sin. You can be changed. You can be transformed. Jesus Christ can do this for you. He did it for me 24 years ago, 24 and a half years ago. 
I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he changed me in a moment in time, in my bedroom by myself. I was not in a church building. There was not a church service. Christ changed me in a moment in time. He can do the same thing for you. But Jesus of the Bible, the Son of God, God in flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. This is the Jesus I proclaim to you. The one who life is found in. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. It's the only way to the kingdom of God. The only way you're going to find the truth, the only way you're going to receive life is through Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross. That's your only hope. Well, you don't have to go to hell, sir. You can go to his kingdom. You don't have to go to hell. Yes, Jesus Christ died for you. Yes, most will go there, but you don't have to. Bible says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Which group are you a part of? The many who will go to destruction, or on the broad path that leads to destruction? Or are you a part of the few? You're on the narrow path that leads to life. Test, test, test. Oh, America needs to fear the Lord. I see a lot of people here that don't fear the Lord. They fear something else. You either fear man or fear you fear God. Do you fear God? Because a lot of professing believers out here don't think that you need to fear God. A lot of people in general don't think that they need to fear God. But my friends, the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. My friends, you need to turn from your sin. It's said that people will come here to spend almost a thousand dollars for a ticket to see people run on a field and throw a ball back and forth. Oh my friends, the Bible says that you worship the creature rather than the creator. Many of you are coming here to see your favorite, your favorite player. But how many of you would sit in line as long as you did today to see Jesus? And that's why we're here, because many of you wouldn't. And the Bible says that the path that leads to hell, many are on that path. And the path that leads to eternal life. Only few of you will find it. And that's not to say that you're automatically going to hell. But many of you are so quick to throw in the towel when you see your sins. When they become a weight to you. When you see your sin and for what it is. You shouldn't be quick to throw in the towel, my friends. You can come to Jesus Christ today. You can come to Jesus while today is still called today. Because many of you... Many of you may die in the next 10 years. And I, I pray that none of you die tonight in your sins. Because God's will is that all of you come to repentance. Come to Him by repenting of your sins. You need to repent. America needs to repent. There's such apathy. Such apathy here in America. So many people think that the gospel message is beneath them. So many of you think that you, you're going to live maybe 50, 60, or 70, or 80 years at most. Oh, my friends, but you don't even know if you're going to die or when you're going to die. Because death can come knocking on your door when you least expect it. Do any of you know when you're going to die? Do any of you know? Do any of you know when you're going to die and see God? Because if none of you know when you're going to die, there should be urgency to get right with God. Because don't you know that eternity is forever? So there's eternal hell or eternal heaven. God bless you. And you can choose today if you will serve God or serve yourself. That's the problem in America. We have too many people serving themselves. And that's the way 
that America, that's the way this world works. And my friends, we're here to tell you that sin will never satisfy. If sin satisfied you, all you would need to do is do it once and then you're satisfied. But that's why many of you keep going back to the beer bottle. That's why many of you keep going back to that, that, that girl, that boy, and fornicating with them. See, sin never satisfies. The Bible says that men drink iniquity like water. But Jesus Christ is the living water. And if you come to him, you will never thirst, the Bible says. But many of you are still going to want to drink water. Not the living water, but just regular water, spiritually speaking. Which will, always, which will never quench your thirst. But Jesus Christ, he promises to give you life and life more abundantly. Oh, how many of you will humble your hearts before God? Many of you have proud looks. Let me tell you what the Bible says about a proud look. The Bible says that God hates a proud look. It's because you have the persona that you think you know it all. You think that you have it all figured out. But do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? If you don't, you ought to serve the one that does. My friends, Jesus Christ can promise you eternal life with him. You know, many people say that they're Christians. Many people say that they're Christians. And I'm sure many of you will go to church tomorrow and still act like a Christian. But that's the problem. You're acting. You're not actually being one. Because if you're here tonight, I question if you are a Christian. Because if someone's willing to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars, just to see people play a game, when they can see it for free on their TV, there, there's a problem. You know, I think it's driven by a covetous desire to see the person that you see on TV, the person you follow more closely than you do Jesus. And the Bible says that idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. Many idolaters here tonight, many idolaters here, you know more about the player you're coming to see than you do about Jesus. That's idolatry. That's idolatry. America is a very idolatrous country. We have many idols here in America. Whether it be politics or celebrities or musicians. It could even be your phone. If you're found on your phone more than you are in the Word of God, there's a problem. And you can't go through some self-help program or some self-help religion to deal with these problems. You need Jesus to cleanse you from all your sin. The blood of the Lamb that was slain for you. And many of you have heard this message many, many times, and you continue to disregard it as if it's just some, some fantasy story. But my friends, when you die, we got one, baby. you'll see, you'll see the urgency, why we had such urgency to preach the word of God to you. Because sadly, many of you are going to choose to go to hell. And you may not say it verbally, you may not say with your lips that I want to go to hell, but if you're living in sin, you're saying it a lot louder with your actions than your words. And we, we have a repentance cry in our heart today for America to wake up. And you know, the Bible says if you deny Jesus Christ on Judgment Day, he will, he will deny you before the Father. And you don't want to be found rejecting Christ. Because many of you are holding yourselves, withholding yourselves from God. You don't want to give, you don't want to fully surrender yourself to God. And you know mockers, oh I hope you're not mocking sir, the Bible says mockers will not inherit the kingdom of God. No mocker will, found, will be found on judgment day mocking God. The Bible says God is not mocked. You think you're very funny before your friends today? saying all types of wicked things that you would not say before God. And many of you, the only time you mention Jesus is to blaspheme his name. Why is that? Why is Jesus the first name you blaspheme instead of Allah or Buddha or even Satan? It's because this world is at enmity with God. This world hates God. This world hates Jesus. 
That's why many of you have a hatred towards us. Not because you hate us, but because you hate Jesus. Because he testifies that this world is wicked. That the deeds of this world is wicked. Oh, don't think that Jesus is beneath you because you will be beneath him on Judgment Day. Don't think you're beneath Jesus today, my friends, or above Jesus. You need to humble yourselves before God. You need to cry out to God today. You need to get right with God. Put down the beer bottle. Put down the beer can. And pick up your Bible. Put it down. Put it down. Because it, 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 if you don't put down the sin today, it will put you down for eternity and hell on Judgment Day. And you don't have to go to hell. Many of you probably have a, a mindset already made up about Christians that we want you to go to hell. But my friends, if we wanted you to go to hell, we wouldn't be here today telling you not to go to hell. Oh, watch your mouth, sir. There's kids around here. You have a filthy heart, the Bible says. The Bible says that if you're, if you use any false, uh, if you use any profanity, you have a wicked heart. Whatever is in your heart will come out of your lips. And if you're blaspheming God, it just shows the heart condition. If you're, if you're using profane language, it shows that you need a, a new heart. Because many of you have filthy hearts. Many of you have unredeemed hearts. And this is why you need Jesus. Oh, do you not see your need for Jesus? Do you not see your need for Jesus? How many of you think that you know Jesus? Because if you knew him, you wouldn't be walking here. You wouldn't even care about the things of this world. Because you would be more consumed with him than this world. You wouldn't be a friend of this world. And it's sad that many of you are friends of this world. The Bible says in James 4.4, 4, if you're a friend of this world, you're, you're an enemy of God. The Bible also says, if you love this world or the things in this world, the love of the Father is not in you. Do you love this world more than you love God? Do you spend more time watching football, watching basketball, baseball, whatever it may be, more than you do with God. Many of you probably traveled hundreds of miles, hopefully not thousands, to come see people that don't even know you exist. You know how foolish that is? You're coming to see someone who doesn't even know you exist, who doesn't even care about you. But you know, Jesus' arms, they're wide open for you. But you choose to worship the creature rather than the creator. You're giving your money to someone who could care less about you. But Jesus Christ, he can promise you life with him and life more abundantly. Oh, turn from your sin, turn from your wicked deeds, and turn to Jesus Christ. Satan hates you, man. No, Satan hates you, man. Satan hates you. Well, it's evident that you hate God, but Satan hates you. God loves you. Satan, Satan hates you, sir. I love Jesus. Well, if you love Jesus, you want to be walking here. You're crazy. If you're, if you love Jesus, you want to be an idolater. If you love Jesus, you want to have a beer in your hand. The Bible says, drunkards do not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators, I don't. They don't. If you turn from them. See, that's the problem. People don't know what repentance means. You think that you think that just saying I'm sorry and continuing in your sin is repentance. The Bible says you must confess and forsake your sin. I think I'm all of those. That's not good. Well, so you can come off that list. See what I mean? People throw in the towel when they see their sin. Your sin is like a heavy weight. When you see it in the mirror for what it is, it becomes a heavy weight. But my friends, there's hope. If you can see that you're in danger, we offer you hope today. Jesus' arms are wide open for you. Yes, if you're on this list, you're in danger and you need Jesus Christ. Are you on this list? Are you on this list, sir? Well, 
you need to come off of it. And you can only come off this list by coming to Jesus. Go <laughs> oh, come to Jesus. How many of you are going to church tomorrow? I am. I'll be there. I am. We'll, st we'll stop acting. Stop acting like a Christian and be one. Well, we show true love, not what this world shows or defines as love. How many of you will go to church tomorrow and play the hypocrite? How many of you have a beer in your hand and will still go to church tomorrow? And you know why the church or the world calls the true church of God hypocrites is because many hypocrites are in the church. Many of you act like Christians on Sunday and then you live like devils the rest of the week. You know, and it always stirs a righteous anger in me because, you know, Jesus, he actually says that he will spit out the lukewarm believer out of his mouth. In Revelation 3.16, he says, because you're neither cold nor hot, but in the middle, you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. He's going to spit you out of his mouth, the Bible says. How many of you are going to play church tomorrow? How many of you are going to act like a Christian tomorrow? We, need, we don't need any more actors in the church. We need true Christians. And you know, God can see through all of it. He can see through all of the Christian costumes, the, the Christian fronts in the church. He sees where your heart is. You know, many of you are going to go worship God, a God that you don't even know anything about tomorrow in church. And you know what's sad? It's sad that many of you claim to be Christians. It's sad that many of you claim to be Christians, but you're you're still living for this world. And my friends, if you're spending hundreds of dollars on a ticket, I don't think any true child of God would do that, because I think that's driven by an idolatrous heart that's driven by a covetous desire to see something you could see for free on TV. Oh, my friends, are you consumed with the things of this world or consumed with God? Are you more worried about pleasing man or pleasing God? Because many of you fear man. You fear man and you don't fear God. And if you fear man, you're not going to do you're going to withhold things that you would do if you fear man. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 28, to not fear man, what man can do to you. But fear God, who can kill your body and cast your soul into hell. Why are you fearing the wrong things? Many of you probably two years ago started fearing COVID. And many of you probably fear COVID to the point where you got a vaccine. Praise the Lord! But Jesus Christ can oh, vaccine Jesus. you from sin. He can He can wash you clean from all sin. Say yes. Nope. You won't Why say that on Judgment Day, ma'am. Yes, I will too. That's right. We'll see about that because the Bible says God is not mocked. So you're so lofty and so proud today. And it just grieves my heart. It grieves my heart that many of you hate Jesus. And if you say you don't hate Jesus, but you're still living in sin, that's contradictory. Because the Bible says, Jesus says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What do you look like before God? Are you still living in rebellion towards him? You know, it's hard to say, it's hard to convince anyone that you love them when you keep hurting them. It's hard to convince your wife that you love her when you keep cheating on her. So why do you think that you can fool Jesus and say that you love him, but you keep sinning against him? You're not fooling God. You're not fooling God, my friends. You may fool man, but you will not fool God. Get right with him today. Come to Jesus today while you still can, while there's still breath in your lungs. 
Oh, you know it's by God's grace that we're all still standing. You know, God, God's mercy is that his, he's allowing his enemies to wake up every day. He allows you as an enemy of God to wake up just hoping that you would repent. He's not going to force you to follow him. You have to, the Bible says you have to cut your right hand off. You're judging me, you're judging me sir. The Bible doesn't say to not judge. It says to judge righteous judgments. It says to judge righteous judgments. So if you make a judgment, it better be true. And the Bible says you'll know a tree by its fruit. So if someone claims to be a Christian and uses profanity, you can judge righteous judgment and, and say what they did was sin. Oh, my friends, come to Jesus before it's too late. Jesus doesn't want to send you to hell, but he will send you there if you choose to go there. He'll only give you what you want. So if you want Jesus, you won't want this world. But if you want your sin, you won't want Jesus. It goes both ways. You can't serve two masters, the Bible says. You're either going to love your sin and hate Jesus, or you're going to love Jesus and hate your sin. Which is it for you? What do you love? Do you love your sin, or do you love Jesus? Because I see a lot of people who love their sin and hate God out here today. See, it's evident. It's evident. You just use his name as a filth word. My point proven. Why do you use God's name in vain? Why do you use Jesus' name in vain? Many professing believers use Jesus' name in vain. The Bible says that blasphemers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Turn from your wickedness. Turn to Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, do you really find hope in that beer bottle? Yeah, 100%. No, you don't. Otherwise, you would stop going back to it. I'm sure you did. But my friends, salvation is free to you. But there is a cost, and that's losing your sin. That's that's clinging to Jesus and departing from your iniquity. He calls you to lay it down at the foot of his cross and follow him. How many of you are willing to do that? There's no hope in fornication. There's no hope in drugs. There's no hope in beer or alcohol. There's only hope in Jesus. There's a living hope that you can have, which is only in Jesus. Jesus drank alcohol. And then drunkards, too. It's funny how people use Jesus turning water into wine as a justification for their sin. When you deep down, when you know deep down inside that you're drinking is a sin before God. <laughs> and the Lord said, Go down, baby! You're idolatry, sir. Thank you. See, they got, they got you acting like a dog, that's for sure. And the Bible says that dogs will be left out of heaven. Oh, no. Am I getting roasted? Yes, Georgia dogs included. Turn from your sin. God's not here for a particular team. I hope you didn't pray a prayer this morning, hoping that your team would win. God didn't hear it. He doesn't hear the prayers of sinners, the Bible says. He hears the prayers of those who obey him, the saints. Are you a sinner or a saint today? Because you can't be both. Show me in the Bible. The Bible says you can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve God in this world. You can't serve God and yourself. Follow the holy example that we have, which is Jesus. He came not to be served, but to serve. Get off of it before you go to hell. Are you serving yourself or serving God? Are you loving your neighbor or hating your neighbor? Are you loving God or hating God? If you're living in sin, I can answer that for you. You hate God. 
Oh, turn from your sin, my friends. The Bible says that sinners will not inherit the kingdom of God. To not be deceived. Many of you are deceived. And you need street preachers to come out to you because you'll never go to a church. And if you're going to church and you're still coming here with beer in your hand, church is not doing you anything. Church isn't doing you anything. It's not just a social gathering that many of you treat it as such. It's coming, it's coming before God and iron sharpening iron to go back out. Mockers yes! won't inherit the kingdom of God. You, you won't inherit the kingdom of God if you die in your sin. See, that, that's God's mercy. That's God's mercy, sir. You can mock him today. I plead with you that you would get right, though. Because he, he, though you're so wicked, he loved you so much to die for you. Though you still blaspheme God every day by your life, by your words, he still died for you, knowing that many of you would still reject him. You would choose to reject him. That's a loving God. That's a loving God to still die, knowing the outcome, knowing that many would still choose the broad way that leads to hell. Yes, if you see yourself on that list, don't rejoice. Repent. Repent. And repent is not just saying I'm sorry and continuing to do it. Repenting is turning from your sin. Saying you're sorry and actually proving that you're sorry. It's not just saying I'm sorry, Lord, and then the temptation comes again and then you do it. It's saying I'm sorry, Lord, now I'm just going to fear you and abide in you. The Bible says, he who commits sin is a slave of sin. He who commits sin is of their father. Listen, of their father, the devil. Do you want your father to be the devil? Or do you want it to be God? Well, if you're living in sin, the Bible says that your father is the devil. You don't want your father to be the devil. Because his what he wants for you is not what you want. What Satan wants for you is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus, he's come that you may have life and life more abundantly. So you choose who you're going to serve today. It's not just going to church on Sunday, paying your tithes and your dues, going for a 30-minute sermon. No, go Jesus. Hell could be tonight for you if you don't repent. None of you know when you're going to die. None of you know when you're going to die. When do you know when death is going to come knocking on your door? Do you know when death's going to come? I don't see any hands raised. Oh, my friends. Not a cult, sinner. Follow on Jesus. You don't know the definition of a cult, sir. You don't know the definition. Turn from your sin. You coming here to see a man that you highly esteem, that's a cult right there, sir. That's a cult right there. You don't know the definition of a cult, but you guys are actually in a cult because you're coming here to see someone. You're paying to see someone. Oh, repent of your idolatry. Turn from your wickedness. Turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. Jesus doesn't require that you pay to see him. You're paying to see people that, that won't even look at you, that don't even know you exist. But Jesus died for you. He died because he loved you. But the problem is that you don't love God. Yes, many of you say that God loves me. I'm a Christian. <laughs> many of you say that God loves you. Which is true. He sent his, his only begotten son. I agree. agree. But, you, but you don't love God. Put down the beer, man. Put down the beer. You don't love God. Get rid of the beer. And those who say Get rid of your sin. That, that God will judge them. Jesus. That God can only judge you. You Turn better not take sin. comfort in that. Because you must be reminded that God will judge you don't one day. Sin no more. And you Fear don't want to be judged by God and Repent your sin. Your perish. Because if you think we're judgmental today, wait until you stand before God, who will lay your whole 
resume of sin out right before you. Your sin will weigh you down all the way to hell. Because sin brings a weight. Sin, sin brings a separation between you and God. You can't, you can't love God and love your sin at the same time. That won't ever work. And if you, if you, if you try to justify your sin, the Bible says to be not deceived. Don't be deceived. There's so much deception in these last days, especially here in America. There's doctrine of demons after doctrines of demons everywhere. If you say you love Jesus, prove it. If you say you're a Christian, prove it. Because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Many of you who claim to be a, a Christian, prove it. Stop rejoicing in your sin. I don't fear him. I love him. It tells Stop you rejoicing fear him. It tells in your you fear iniquity. Jesus says to fear him. If you love Jesus, it'll be evident. It'll be evident that you love him. Now, dogs will be outside the kingdom, actually. Oh, my friends. We want you to know the love of Christ. Let people make up their own minds. I am. No one's making you make your mind up. You can make up. I'm telling the mind. truth. What? Let make up their own mind. I am. Sir, we're not forcing anybody to accept Jesus. We're not forcing anybody to turn to Jesus. That forcing ain't forcing you to read my sign, even. Is a lot different than what we're doing. We're just preaching. And you know, it's crazy that atheists get so mad at the preaching of the cross. Well, if you're a consistent atheist, then this message means nothing to you, and you just pass on and think we're stupid. And my friends, the track is on the ground. let me tell you, the atheists, when they die, they will no longer be atheists. There's a lot of near-death experiences, a lot of deathbed experiences with atheists. And there's signs of ones on the ground, and they're with them. Finally the believe so that they're believe. Up. They don't get the idea. It's too late you know because I mean? okay. there's sin hard in their hearts. See, a lot of people put their trust in a deathbed conversion. A lot of people put their trust in a deathbed conversion. You're sorry for us? Sorry for us. I'm We're sorry for you, God. sir. Part of the kingdom of God. I'm sorry for you. If you're in sin, I'm, there's pity. There's pity there. Because you think that you, you know what's best. You think, you think that you know where, where your sin, that your sin will satisfy. Oh, my friends, if sin truly satisfied you, if your alcohol truly satisfied you, all it would take is drinking it once. But you keep going back because it's not satisfying you. That's why people start young drinking and then they become alcoholics when they're older because it never satisfied. Sin will never satisfy you. Amen. Only Jesus will satisfy. Only Jesus will satisfy you. Only Jesus. You can't prove to me that your sin has satisfied you. Come to Jesus before it's too late. Oh, God hates. Yes, God loves. Therefore, he must hate. If we were made in his image and we're able to hate and love, don't you think God can do the same thing? Well, the Bible actually says that God hates. And he hates a proud look. Many of you have a proud look before God today. Many of you think that Jesus is beneath you. When in all reality, you'll be beneath him on that day when you stand before him. You'll beg him to forgive you. But you know, the reason why you won't be forgiven for your sins on judgment day is because you're not repenting because of your, your sin. You're repenting because you got caught. You're sinning because, because you, your sin stands before you. My friends, that's why Jesus says today, so you can get on the list, sir. Don't throw in the towel. You can come to Jesus. Same on you. You can come to Jesus today. Yes, Jesus is coming. What are you doing to prepare? What are you doing to prepare? A lot of people acknowledge that Jesus is coming back. Well, what are you doing to prepare? You know, when there when there's hurricanes that happen down in Florida, people don't just say, oh, there's a hurricane coming. They evacuate. So when we tell you that Jesus is coming, when you say that Jesus is coming, what are you doing? Are you just gonna just are you just gonna sit idle? 
Are you just going to sit by and just wait for something to happen? Or are you just going to wait for him to come back and take vengeance on those who don't know him? Do y'all hate everybody? I don't hate anybody. We don't hate anybody, ma'am. What's hateful about this? What, what, what do you see? Where, where, where do you see hate? Where do you see hate? You know, it'd be hateful if we didn't come here and stand against sin. It'd be hateful if we didn't tell you a better way out. It'd be hateful if none of us came here today. But the driving motivation that brought us out here is our love for you, our love for God primarily, and then our love for our neighbors secondly. Because we don't want to see any of you perish. We used to be on the path that you were on. There's many testimonies in the body of Christ. There's many testimonies of where we, uh, how we used to be where you were. And Jesus Christ, you're in sin. You're in sin. You need to turn from your sin. You wouldn't be drinking beer, sir. You wouldn't be drinking beer. See, you're just... Sin you're justifying your sin. That's the problem right there. That shows me that you have a heart problem. I'm gonna repent after. What if you don't have after? Too late, what if you die in there? Too late. What if you die in there? Then it's eternal hell. It's eternal hell. See, people are so flippant with their souls. Why are you so angry, sir? You can't take my joy. You can't take my joy. Turn from your sin. It's crazy how people get so mad at a, a, at a complete stranger. Same on you, Senator. It usually takes someone who you really love to get under your skin so easily. But if you're getting so mad at the gospel, it shows us that you're convicted. It shows us that you know what we're preaching is the truth. Love you all. But you continue. You continue in your sin. How can I help you, sir? Are these folks with you? Yes. yes. Okay, I just got finished explaining the same thing to these gentlemen. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing, but since this is state property, it follows up under control of the Georgia World Congress Center. You cannot have amplified sound, and you can't have signs larger than two feet by three feet. Handing out flyers and pamphlets is fine. Long as There's several groups. Uh, you can hand out flyers as long as you're not blocking the sidewalk. No large signs. You can't have a sign on a pole or a stick, and nothing larger than two feet by three feet. Okay, well, I talked to someone last time, sir. What did you talk to? Uh, he was a major like you. I can't remember his name, sir. But... I, I, for the Congress, then, I'm the only major. Well, I mean, he was a captain then. Captain yeah. Captain Jackson would have told you the same thing. He was thing. a bigger bigger black guy, right. heavy set. Right. No, that's Cap not what he told us, sir. He told no. us to come right here. No. If you're over there. No, no. This is actually public property, sir, so this we don't is, have This is state property, sir. What's this public property? I, I'm glad you're recording this so you can understand what I'm saying. No, this is state property. I understand All, all of the sidewalks surrounding the Georgia Walk Congress Center. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the Ted Olympic Park, and the surrounding streets falls up under control of the Georgia Walk yeah. Center. So, so uh, down by the uh, Olympic Park there, my, it's the same thing there. Yes, yeah, and my friends won a lawsuit about that a few years ago, and we're allowed to preach over there now as well. So, I, with, I, with with amplified sound. That's right, sir. Now, and I do recall a lawsuit where an officer told individuals they could not either preach or, or speak the gospel. No, no. But I don't recall anything with the violation. There's amplification of and okay. everything, sir. What I'm going to do, sir, I'm, I'm going to go get a copy of the ordinance for them. I'll show you the same thing so you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's the ordinance that falls up in the Georgia Wakanda Center. Now, uh, 10 dash 9 dash 14. Now, Major, so you know, my name is Kerrigan. Okay, please, pleasure. I, I'm not here to be uh, right, right. rebellious. Right, right. I appreciate your service. Right, right. I'm a law abiding citizen. Right. I've been doing this for almost 20 years and now. That's, that's exactly what I want you to do. So, so, to, to so, continue to abide by our law. Well, the thing is, though, sir, if, if your regulations uh, super, uh, trying to supersede the Constitution, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't obey those. And so in the Constitution, I have freedom to listen to freedom of speech. Okay. And it's a public sidewalk paid by taxpayer dollars. Right, right. And I've done this many times, right. never had a problem. I'm not right. here to cause problems here right. to proclaim the gospel. And everyone that does it here on our property, we address the same way. Well, I, only, I, only thing I'm doing, sir, and you say your name is what again? Kerrigan. Kerrigan, Mr. Kerrigan. Yes, sir. The only thing I'm doing is asking for your compliance. A simple request. I can comply. The only, only thing I'm doing okay. is asking you to comply with our ordinance. I'll, ordinance I'll says, like I explained to you, no amplified sound. You can't have signs on pole stakes. You cannot have signs larger than two feet by three feet. Those are all two by three, though. One. Two by three? Those two, that one's three by three. That, yeah, that's two that's by three. Larger, but, 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 those but, are fine. But what I'm saying, sir, is, is when your ordinance 
uh, takes away from my First Amendment rights, I cannot in good conscience submit to them right, because right. I have right. a, I have the Constitution. Right, so right. you can't take away those freedoms right, because right. of that, sir. I'm, so I'm glad you're hearing this too. No, but there are options to work around the ordinance. Okay, we have designated areas for it. This yeah, I know about that. Of, okay, so you, no, I know I've, I've gone through this before, so I've been doing this for here here in Georgia right, for three right, over three right, years right. now. So I understand there's a spot over there and right, over there right, wants to right, go to, right. but I I want to be right here. That's where I want to be. But, so I had the freedom to be here. But, but, if, but if, if you're here, you, you're infringing on, on our ordinance. Well, I don't agree with Just that. Just as long as you understand that. Yeah, I don't agree with okay, that. Okay, I'll tell you yeah. what I'm going to do. Okay. Let's pay our, for my taxpayer dollars so I can be here. Three, two, come in. Still out with those individuals. Got one individual. Harrigan is refusing to leave. I'm going to stand here for a few and uh, continue to explain the ordinance to Okay. Now, I don't need an explanation of the ordinance. I understand the ordinance. I just rejecting it. That's a negative at this time. They are in compliance except for the ordinance. Now, but like I said, I'm glad you're recording this. I understand about the lawsuits we've been through this several times before. Yeah, I don't, I don't, okay, tell you sir, I don't want a lawsuit. Yeah, right, I don't but, want but, sir, I know, but the lawsuit was, folks was told to leave by being within the ordinance. You all are not within the ordinance. That actually wasn't the guy. I know the guy. He's my friend. Okay. So he, he actually wanted down there in front of Olympic Park. Right, right. You remember Super Bowl was here in 2019? Right, right. We did it right there. Right. 2019, okay. no problems for anybody. As long, long as you're within the ordinance, but you're not within the ordinance. No, that's what I'm saying to you. It's what the orange you're describing to me, we were not within that. Okay. Because right. the Bible said what goes in the Bible don't defy you. So in other words, you are, you are refusing to leave at this time. I'm, I'm telling you that I have a freedom and a right to be here and to do what I'm doing. As long as you're within the ordinance. Uh, sir, your, your ordinance goes ab 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 above the Constitution. You're infringing upon our constitutional rights. Sir, you want to cover the ordinance? Uh, I mean, uh, if it's going against the freedom of speech, I mean, at this point, it's too bad. Okay, well, I'm actually trying to take this from citing you all for infringing on the ordinance on state property. I'm trying to give you an area of relief. There's areas for it, but not right here. Okay, so. so Okay. So, so, sir, when we got here today, right. we got here about 1 o'clock. Yeah, if the officer told you he was here, they were completely wrong. And they, they well, I got it on video that he told me right. that. Okay, well, that's okay. something that I will address. Right. Okay, but but here's the thing, so, right. sir. So, that's this is right. state property right. and public property. Right. Pay for our taxpayer dollar just as much as that area over there and that area over there. So, you can't have different regulations for that area and that area compared to this area because they're all paid for by taxpayer dollars. Not the way the law works. Mm. Okay. So, so I mean, I, when I came here today, right. I actually intended to go down there originally, but right. there's already people down there. Right. So this is the only spot that was left open, okay. so I came here. Yeah, but this spot falls up under the control of George Will Congress Center. Different. Which doesn't, okay. make, doesn't now, change now, the now, nature the city, of the property. Though. The city of Atlanta does not have an ordinance. We do. Okay, but it doesn't, sorry, doesn't, cha doesn't change Kerrigan. the nature of the property, though, Mr. man. Mr. Kerrigan, I want to thank my ask for just your compliance. That's all I'm asking but, for. But, sir, we, there, there, there's dozens have, of areas that I can send you to. All I'm asking you for is my freedoms that I, I already have, sir. Yes, you do. Okay, well, that's what I'm asking for right here. But, but this, okay, so in other words, you're telling me that you are refusing to leave. Is, is, is this what, I, what, what I'm saying? telling you, sir, is that what your command is an unlawful command, right, right. not based upon the Constitution. Right, right. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. All right, well, let me let me get some recordings, too, if you don't mind. I don't mind recording all you want, sir. I have no problem at all. You know, even in your own way of life. So in other words, again, you you, you all are telling me you're not going to leave. Okay, you're not going to leave. Okay, no problem. No problem. So we're within the scope of the law, sir. But you're not within the scope of the law. So I am. So I'm going to ask you something. So if I come back with the order to show you what it says, you still believe it. But, but sir, the, the, the problem, like I said, is not, once again, it's not because we don't understand what your ordinance says. We've been told it many times. Right. I reject the ordinance under the, the, the base that it's okay. infringing upon my constitutional okay. rights. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get the ordinance. I'm going to show it to both of them. At that time, if you refuse to leave, it'll be a different situation. But what, what's, what's, the, what's the threat, it's sir? Be a, it's not a threat. It's going to be a different situation. Well, tell me what's going to happen. I'm, I'm just going to record it. It's going to be a different situation. Well, you have to tell me what my, what's going to happen, sir. I'm going to read the ordinance to you. I'm and then what's going to happen if I don't leave, it'll sir? Be a different situation. What, what it's going to be? What's going to be the situation? We'll, we'll see that when I come back. Okay. okay. All right. So, so you're refusing to leave. Yeah, I'm refusing yes, to leave. Sir. Also, you are refusing to leave.
Okay, no problem. But you still want to see I'll be glad to show it to you. In the meantime, you cannot have amplified sound. I'll allow you to hold your signs, but no amplified sound. We still plan to use it, sir. We still plan to use it. Okay, no problem. I'll be back with the orders. Okay. It'll be a different story when I get back. Okay, sir. You can go ahead and keep preaching, bro. Hey, bro. You can go ahead and keep on preaching if you want. Okay. You can go ahead and keep on preaching. Yeah, yeah, but don't hit him so hard. Speak on love. We Americans need a whole lot of that right now. What? Yes, ma'am. Oh, man, we hate sin, baby, but it's beyond us. These spirit high places are bigger than you, you can't, You can't hate sin and keep on doing it. You can't hate something, keep doing Put gossip up there. Okay, gossip, say gossip. Oh, yes, it's not, sir. It's not like a very gossip. exhaustive list. He said that gossip. only has a few sins. There's many sins on in, in the Bible. But if you're on that Pretty list, Y'all do it because you love us. Yes, sir. Don't do it for a show. If, That's why we're doing it, sir. You stand guilty before God. Don't misjudge our motives, sir. Yes, you need to repent. You need to come to Jesus. You know, if you truly loved your neighbor, you would tell them the truth. You don't want to love someone all the way to hell. You don't want to have a false love for someone all the way to hell. Because the, the, the love of the Bible tells you the truth. If you truly love your neighbor, you will tell them the truth. But many of you have a false love. Some people define love just saying love is love. But that doesn't define love. If you truly love someone, you'll tell them the truth. You'll give them the gospel. The gospel that has the power to save their souls from hell. Jesus wants to save all of you. And picture this path. Picture this path that you're on right now as we speak. The pathway to hell. It says that many are on their path to hell. And only few will go against the grain. How many of you are going against the grain? Many of you are going with the flow. You're not going against the grain. And the Bible says that only few will find the path that leads to eternal life. And you choose. You choose your eternal destiny. You choose whether it's going to be heaven or hell. You choose this day if you're going to serve God or yourself. God wants you to repent. God wants you to serve him. But you're too busy serving yourself. And if you're if you're too busy serving yourself, you can't serve God and yourself. You have to die to yourself. Remember, remember there you have to die to yourself. To Remember that when yeah. we the Bible there? says yeah. that if you're right well, hand you causes you to sin, when I was here with cut it off. Keith Wheeler, so if there's his anything in your life here, and my that's daughter's causing right you to sin, too, get it out of your life. That, that I talked to a cop who was a citizen. If it's was a, alcohol, was captain, get it out of your life. And the major knew who he was. If it's a lustful relationship, get him or her out of your life. And I said, well, he told us we could be right here. I said, well, I'll have to address that with him. So we're going back and forth Jesus and he's saying, Christ well, the ordinance says you can't have more signs on a pole. Repentance, you can't have signs bigger than two by three. Fire, so three by three. More on sin Those are ordinances than you can't anybody have in the Bible. So we have spots for that over there and over there. I said, he well, preached more this isn't just as much public property as those spots are. There's no reason I can't be right claim, here. That's not the taxpayer Jesus dollars pay for this. We well, you're, you're just, trying to pin me and say, well, you're truth. saying you're not going to comply. I'm saying, well, Jesus. no, what I said was, Jesus is that your ordinances. He's saying, saying the same thing Jesus that he told us now. Yeah. But, but they're just trying to push a different guy, though. No, that, that was That's the first guy. And many of you I'm have the wrong Jesus. Jesus. Okay. That's the first guy we dealt with. Like, the first year we were here. Remember, he let you be right there? Passing out tracks? Which is really Satan. The Bible says that the God of the world I said, well, my problem is not misunderstanding your ordinance. My problem is your ordinance is not complying with the Constitution. The little G God of the world And I told him, I referenced Eric's, Eric Love's, Power of the air. lawsuit down to the Olympic Park on the sidewalk you know, around Olympic Park. It, it's not they told to him that he couldn't use amplification there. He won a lawsuit. Now we sin. use it there. It's the same thing. You, you'll end up happen there here. eventually. So I'm if trying to really see. He's pretty, pretty reasonable. But so he told friend, me, he's going to the ordinance. He's going to show it to no, me. You don't have to go And to then hell. things are going to change. So what's going to change? You don't have to go to hell, man. Things are going to change. I said, what are you threatening? He said, things are going to change. So he wouldn't give me an answer. See, we don't hate you. So he comes back. I don't know what's going to happen. We wouldn't be out here. Yeah, but, but they're just you trying to push it. The living yeah. hope that you because can have in Christ. the same stuff they told us down there. There's right. no hope in the beer bottle And in they told hand. us to come here. Right. There's exactly. no hope. Exactly. There's so, no so they're just trying to push us. As far away as possible. Way 
yeah. over the Stone Mountain or something. That's right. And if there was true satisfaction, I've been over there. I've been across the street. Bottle in your hand. Nobody. And you the would stop TBI, going the back to the street. He said it was all right. You would stop yeah, going I mean, back to that beer. There's that so alcohol. there's so much confusion about it because GBI understands so this is public property. When you come to Jesus, he hasn't been indoctrinated with all the ordinances of Gigi, uh, Georgia World Congress Center. Joy so in his presence. Yeah, but it. And he He's also really pushing the limits of the Georgia World Congress, isn't he? Yeah, he is. <laughs> so, this, this is this is this is as much public property have, as anywhere else. If, if, you're I, in your I, if I were to guess no right need, now, bro, the Bible says, I don't think he's even gonna come back. Yeah. We're, I'm no only gonna be here for another half an hour or so. So there's I mean, no peace to the wicked. But we've been here, bro, since like one o'clock, and no one said a word to us. Who's the wicked? And now they're saying something to us. Two and two hours and forty five minutes later. And Jesus Christ has come to set you free from your sin. He's come. I He's wonder what they would say if you did it across the street over there. But from, I wouldn't want to give up this corner. No, that, the no eyes, that's what he was telling me. He said, well, Atlanta does not have any ordinances on these See, things. The pride of life will Atlanta so property. many people he was, to help. He didn't put, point over there, but I knew he was talking about God it. Over the he wanted me over there. Grace to the but now over there, you have problems with side blocking the sidewalk. Are you today? Yeah, they were small sidewalk. Are you constantly showing the whole world what you have got to hold this corner. Yeah, I think we should hold our ground. Because that's why so many people are depressed. Because they're... They're posting about a life they're not really living. And you know, Jesus Christ, he can call you out of all of that. You know, his word pierces the heart. Why are you so angry, sir? Why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? That's idolatry right there. That's, that's pretty cultish. That's pretty cultish if you ask me. You have your own motto, you have your own slogan, go and you Jesus. pay to see men. Go Jesus. You pay to see people go who Jesus. don't even know you exist. Not go dogs, go Jesus. Go Jesus. Do any of the people that you're going to see here that you pay to see, do they know that you exist? Do they die for you? Do they love you? I think not. I don't think any of them even know that you exist. They depend on you to make a living. But Jesus Christ, you don't have to pay to come see him. He's already right here. You can come to him. He's as close as the mention of his name. No, go Jesus. The, the dogs won't the, the dogs won't get you into heaven. The dogs aren't gonna get us. The dogs will actually stay outside of heaven. The dogs will stay outside of heaven, the Bible says. No, all dogs don't go to heaven. Show me that in the Bible. Oh, my friends, so many people idolize their their sports, their teams, their players. You know more about the person you're coming to see than you do about Jesus. And you know, it's, it's, it's very fascinating. It's very interesting that many of you know so much about the person you're coming to see, know so much about the sport. But you don't know anything about Jesus. But if you know this much about the person that you're coming to see, do they know that much about you? Don't you think that's a little weird? You're pretty much stalking the person that you know about. You're coming to see someone that doesn't know you exist. But you know Jesus, he knows every single one of you. And you ought to know him. You know the reason why you're still living in sin is because you don't fear God. It's because you don't fear God. You don't fear God, you fear man. How many of you fear COVID-19? How many of you fear man? The Bible says, will the dog save you, man? Will the dog save you? They won't. They won't. See, they got you acting like an animal. Jesus can make you act like a saint. He can make you a saint. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. God bless. We no, you're a dog, dog, sir. How many of you are dogs? How many of you are dogs? Because that's what this team has made you to be. You're acting like actual dogs. But Jesus can make you a saint. And you won't act. You won't say woof, woof. You'll say hallelujah. I will. Shame on, you, Shame on you, Shame on you. Shame on you. And just like that, you throw that track off the cliff, Jesus is going to throw you into hell, sir, if you don't repent. 
Yes, that's the that's the Bible, man. Well, are you, is the grace that you call grace making you righteous? Is it making you righteous? A lot of you professing believers don't know what the true grace of God is. It teaches you to live righteous. It teaches you to live holy. Do you love God? I hope that's not beer in your hand, ma'am. Because <laughs> the Bible says in John 14, 15, if you love God, you'll keep his commandments. If you love God, you'll obey what he tells you to do. Try telling your wife that you love her and cheating on her at the same time. It doesn't work. She understands, okay. That's so wicked. Well, I'm sure God understands when he sends you to hell, sir. <clears throat> oh, my friends, you need to turn from your sin. God doesn't want to send you there. He doesn't want to send you to hell. He doesn't want to send you to eternal darkness, eternal separation. He wants you to come to heaven. And that's why we come out here. Because we know the preaching of the cross will not return void. We know that someone out of all these thousands of people, even if it's just one, will come to repentance. Yes, Muslims will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm positive. You don't know, ma'am. Do they serve the same God? Do they serve the same God? Turn from your sin, mocker. They're not, they're not right. I know, I know for a certain. Because the, the God that Muslims follow is actually the devil. It's the devil. Turn from your sin. Jesus Christ. He says that drunkards, drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. No, you don't have to throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. It's not hopeless for you. Don't throw in the towel. You, you still have hope. See, it's all funny. It's all funny right now before your friends and family. It's all funny before your friends and family. But it won't be a good time in hell. You know, you will never see your family or friends in hell. There's an eternal darkness, eternal torment, eternal judgment. You'll never see again in hell. It'll just be memories. And those memories will torment you for all of eternity. You know the memories you're going to take to hell? Do you know the memories that you're going to take to hell if you go there? It's not going to be this football game. It's going to be what we're preaching to you right now. It's going to be this message. It's going to be this message. And you know it's sad. It's so sad because you're mocking. It's so sad because you're mocking. Oh, man. You can see the screen from here. No lies. We know you can see it right there. No, you get a turn from your sin, sir. No, he loves you and he hates your sin. He doesn't love this world. Is that biblical? Is that biblical, sir? Is that biblical? Is what she said was biblical? Is what you got in your hand, is that going to send you to hell? I'm not telling you you're a bad person. You're, you're already convinced that you are. You're convinced that you are. Because your sin... You know, the Bible says that drunkards won't inherit the kingdom of God. It's not just me coming out here attacking drunkards. We're standing against sin as a whole. Anything, anything contrary to God will send you to hell. Whether it be lusting, fornicating, idolatry, covetous, profanity, blasphemy, all these things will send you to hell. Oh, turn from your sin. Jesus wants to give you life and life more abundantly. And yes, you're saying shut up because you've heard it so many times. And it's so sad that you, you, you react that way to the gospel. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? He's about love, by the way, not hate. 
Jesus spread the truth, and we're spreading the truth too. You, many of you think that love is tolerating someone in their sin. Many of you think that love, you're, the love that you think that you think is love is only love that goes flesh deep, skin deep. But the love that the Bible gives you, the, the, the love that the, the uh, God of the Bible gives you goes deeper than the flesh. It goes to the heart. It actually pierces the heart, the Bible says. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.12 that the word of God is sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's because it convicts you of your sin. When, when, I, when I stood before God, when I saw that my sin was actually going to separate me from God for all of eternity, my sin then became a heavy weight until I confessed it to God. I was heavy burdened, and I had to let go of all my burdens. And that burden is sin. God wants to pardon you of your sin. He says, come, let's reason. God wants to reason with you today. You know, God's mercy is that you're still alive today. He still allows his enemies to, to wake up. He doesn't want any of you mockers or scoffers or sinners to go to hell. But he will. Don't take comfort. He wants, he, he wants you to be saved, but he will send you there if you, if you choose to go there. If you don't choose him. See, you can't... You can't go to heaven and kick God out of his out of his throne, out of his house, out, out of his house. If you if you want to go to heaven, you have to go through the doorway, which is Jesus Christ. See, a lot of people want to go to heaven but don't want to go through Jesus to get there. Oh, turn from your sin. You see how you just denied Jesus? Sir, do you see how you just no, no, they're not. No. Oh, many of you are denying Jesus today. And you know you'll be in eternal. Turn from your sin, sir. Turn from mockery. How many of you are diehard fans of the, of the Georgia Dogs? Will they save you? Will they save you from eternal hell? Do you know more about football stats than you do about Jesus? And if you say yes, you need to repent because that's idolatry. You need to turn from your sin. No, go Jesus. Jesus can save you. Jesus can save you. That, that's the team you ought to be on. That's, that's the team you ought to be on. Team Jesus. Either, there, there's only two teams. There's Team Satan and Team Jesus. Team Satan tells you to not judge. Team Satan tells you, oh, you only live once. Live it up now. Live my best life now. Team Jesus. Jesus tells you to come to him. To repent. To leave this world behind. No, you need to come to the living water. The living water. Jesus Christ, the living water, sir. You need to come to him. And you'll never thirst again. See, a lot of you, a lot of you have water that leaves you to come back. It makes you come back because you're, you, you remain thirsty. Thirsty for your sin. Thank you. God bless you all. You should watch your mouth, ma'am. God do anything to deserve your blasphemy. God didn't do anything to deserve your blasphemy. You know who deserves blasphemy? It's Satan. But you know, none of you are ever gonna blaspheme Satan. You ought, you 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 rather blaspheme God, the one who cares for you, the one who died for you. So you need the fear of the Lord because it's the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of the relationship with God. And if you never had the fear of the Lord and you claim to be a Christian, you never had a relationship with God. 
because it's by the fear of the Lord that men depart from evil. If you don't fear the Lord, you're never going to depart from evil. You may have love, but you really can't have a true okay. biblical love for God if you haven't had the fear of the Lord first. Yeah, that's true. So there's already too much. See, you think that you you don't need to fear God. If you fear God, you would stop sinning against Him. You know, there was a man in the Bible, his name was Joseph, and he feared God so much that when Pharaoh's wife tried to sleep right. with him, Can he, hey, he left. So, I don't have to heal. so this is our ordinance, okay? It falls down, up under the George Wall Commons tonight, and not get doing the 1996 Olympics. I don't know if you're familiar with that. State entity, we have ordinance just like the city of Atlanta has ordinance. Every other local jurisdiction, municipality throughout the country has their own ordinance. Because this is state property, we have our ordinances, okay? I'm going to show you the first one. Strictly says the operation of any loudspeaker or other public address or voice application system or device is prohibited. That's why I mentioned that you can't. You can preach, you can talk to people, but no amplified sound. Well, see, if we don't use amplified sound, so we can't even be heard. I understand you, but this okay, is what so it's really that, so what I'm trying to explain to you, sir, but by, by making that point, is by taking amplification away from us, you're essentially stripping freedom of religion from us okay. and freedom of speech because we can't speak to the people. Okay. That the ambient noise right here is way okay. too loud. Right. I understand that. Okay. That's a lot going on, but. Yeah. This is what the ordinance says. For me, it's in black and white. Okay. Now, hold up one, one second. Yeah, sure. For me, it's in black and white. Yep. You are in violation of our ordinance on state property. That's all I'm going to say for Okay, right so, so one thing I would say in response to that, sir, and once again, my friend Eric Love, Olympic Park, Sidewalk around is also under this jurisdiction. Right. He right. won a lawsuit against it. Right. And the 2019 Super Bowl, I preached right there with this banner, with a, a bull, a, a application just like this, mm -hmm. and we had no problems. I've been the Super Bowl. Yep. For the Super Bowl, we, we made an exception. Okay. I, I know, but he won a lawsuit too. I, I know. But okay. Super Bowl, we made an exception. Okay, but he won a lawsuit. We are still with folks from all over. He won a lawsuit. We have folks from Wisconsin came and did the same thing. Wait a minute, something going on here too. Okay. Same okay. thing's going on here. I mean, okay. we're gonna make an exception for that thing. Okay. We should make an exception today too. That was. Uh, do you know what a seer events are? A seer. That's a seer one event. Okay. Okay. Special events, activity, reporting, rating. This is when we get all of the federal resources to help for that event, which uh, is the Super Bowl. Uh, it was a citywide exception, a state exception that was made for that. Okay. So Okay, so so one more thing I want to, before we move on, one more right. thing I want to address about sure. this. You said there's different spots for us to go to that are free speech areas that you have designated for this. So that is not in that area it does not apply. For state property, we have designated areas. For that, uh -huh. of course, if you want to stay here, that's fine. I'm just letting you, let, letting you know you're in violation of the ordinance. Okay, but, but, this but, is but the only point, point I'm making is that is right. that you said in certain areas that right. doesn't apply. No, and I'm telling on, you, this on, is no on, less on okay. this is no less uh, public property than those areas are. The areas that you guys try to point us to every time, right? Designated it's areas state over there, property, state property. but they're, they're no less public okay. than these are. Can, can we move on? Yeah, okay, we can move okay, on. as long as you understand that you're in violation of our ordinance. No, I don't think I, I am. I mean, I don't think I think am. You are, no. But I'm, I'm letting you know, according to what this says, you all in violation because of the amplified sound. Okay. We're moving on. Okay. This is all I'm saying. Yep. This is why I said when I come back, it's going to be a different story. I'm letting you know you're in violation of our ordinance. Moving on. Also got stuff in it for public assemblies. You don't fall up under that category because you're less than 25 people. So, but signs, the current of hand hand carried attendant non-commercial signs, which this is what this is, non-commercial. Not exceeding dimensions of three feet on two sides and two feet on the other side is permitted on exterior sidewalks of the facilities. Okay. Facilities which I read it to you, within the center applies to the Georgia Congress Center. Curtilage, Mercedes Benz Stadium, College Football Hall of Fame, Centennial Plaza, which is in Centennial Olympic Park, Children's Playground, Children's Garden, and everything within the park for the Garden Pavilions and the North Park. Within the East Pavilion, within North Park. So that doesn't apply because you are not in the park. So the current of your sign on a pole larger than two feet by three feet is in violation of our ordinance. That's all I'm just letting you know, you're in violation of our ordinance. I'm not infringing on your freedom of speech. 
the First Amendment, I'm just letting you all know that you're in violation of our ordinance as it applies to your additional items that you have out here. Actually, your ordinance is due up, friends, in our, our free speech. Does it? Okay. Yeah, okay. it does. I'm, I'm just reading this to you. Yeah. And when I said, I'm going to take a father, I've taken a father, I read this to you. Okay. So you understand that you're in violation of our ordinance. Now, the option that I do have, since you're in violation of our ordinance, is not address what you're doing, but address it in a manner of criminal trespassing. Since you are in violation of our ordinance, I could charge you for criminal trespass. You're in violation of our ordinance, you refuse to leave our property because you're in violation. I could charge you for criminal trespass with a copy of the charges. I'm not going to do that. Okay? I'm not going to do that. But I am going to let you know again that you are in violation of our ordinance with the sign violation and the fire sale. It's on you if you refuse to leave. Okay? Each and every time you come here, we can say the same thing to get to the point where our attorney can say, well, go ahead and pursue the criminal trespass charges because they are consistently and repeatedly in violation of our ordinance. The, and sir, sir, the only thing I'm asking is for your compliance. That's all I'm asking, your complaints. I cannot comply to something that takes away my constitutional okay, rights. So. I cannot just do that, sir. And I want to say this, Major, I would like to sit down with you and talk about remedying the situation because okay. these are in violation of my freedom of freedom okay. speech. I'm going to read it again. You already read it. I, I, mean, I understand okay. it. As long as you understand. Yeah. The operation of any... The operation of any loudspeaker of other public address or voice application system or devices is prohibited. Amplify sound. Except in designated areas. Sign. Amplify sound. Except in designated areas, right? Right, sir? It doesn't say designated areas. But you, you keep trying to point us to those designated areas. I'm, I'm pointing you to a designated area for your area of relief, okay? okay. This is not one of our area of relief. Okay. Even in the area that we designate, you still have to buy by the ordinance. So, so I, you, you're telling me that if I went to the area you want me to go to, I couldn't use a loudspeaker still? Not on our area. Not on our property. Not on state property. So, so what's the difference then between that area and this area? The area of relief is where a major event like this, we put folks who want to practice their First Amendment that's not on the public right of way, infringing on the sidewalk, because we got an emergency, folks got to run. You guys would be in the way. Of course, these vehicles in the way. We're right. not present on the sidewalk. Right. Right. I understand. We're understand. walking by. It's fun. But this is in black and white. I'm just again letting you know. Look, I, I, I still want to understand. Okay, I don't think you finished your point. Right. The areas of relief you're talking about. Right. What is the difference between that and this? The areas of relief that we have designated. It was six. Unfortunately, with the construction that we have on campus, we only have four areas. Yeah. This is strategic areas around campus that if somebody wanted to practice their freedom of speech, First Amendment. We put them in designated areas. One, where you can be visible. Two, where you're getting the, the public passing through where they can hear you. We just can't allow Amplify Sound. There's two spots in the park. Currently, there's two locations here at the Congress Center that we can put people so they can be visible. The public can hear you, but you're not infringing on the public right away, and you're not in an area that we utilize for events. Okay, so, so but in those areas, we still can't use amplification? Still can't use amplification. Still can't use three-by-three three signs? You can use two-by-three. Not three-by-three, three, though. Anything large enough. Okay, so no. so what's the difference between that and this? Why can't we? What, why are you making that an area but not this an area? Because this is typically a right-of-way for a major Mercedes-Benz event. But we're off to the side. Yeah, I know, but we don't allow any occupation. Even the vendors that work for Mercedes-Benz and the Georgia World Congress Center, we don't allow them here. Well, that's different. I mean, they're, they're, that's commercial. It's still, it's still. That's commercial. It's still it's infringing on the public right away for a major event. So now You're kind of off to the side. Yeah, but I'm going to explain to you. You two are in violation. What's your name again? Matthew. Matthew, Mr. Kerrigan. Yes, sir. You're in violation of the amplified sound and also the sign. I, I'll, I'll tell you this, Major. I do have a lawyer who's already working on these issues. He's, okay. he's compiling. Right. That's great. A letter to send to you guys. Right. Because of the problems we had over there last year when we were in front of the Mercedes Benz right. Stadium, right. Right. passing out tracks, right. preaching without amplification at right. first, right. then preaching right. with amplification. Right. We had right. problems from Georgia World Congress Center right. and from the now, security over there. And I, I can say if you were preaching without amplification, an officer should have never said nothing to you. Well, that's not what happened. I, okay, but they should have never said nothing to you. I can show you the video footage. Right, right. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I was working that day, too. Well, I didn't see you that right, day. Right, you right, might have right, been, but I didn't but see you. I was you. probably in the EOC. I was dealing with a guy who had an AR-15 pointing right, down. He right, was a sergeant. Right. I've right, had all right, kinds of problems with right, him. Right, right. But right. what I'm trying to say is I don't really want to go a courtroom lawyer route. Right, I mean, I've right. done it before and won. Right, right. I, don't really, I don't really care to do right, that. Right. 
I'd like to be able to sit down with you guys and change these right, things. Right, but, but, because we have rights here. Right, but that's your option if you want to go to court. The only thing I can do is just explain the orders to you. No, but I'm asking, I'm offering something different. Right, I said, can right. we sit down and talk right. about this? Yeah, but the best option to have your attorney get in contact with uh, Parjan Robinson. He's the attorney for the George Ward Congress Center. What's his name? Parjan Robinson. Parjan. Yeah, if your attorney's been working on it, I'm sure he's had. He probably knows he's who had he contact is. with him. Yeah. Well, no, so, he's not. He hasn't contacted anybody yet. Okay. Okay. He just, he just he's just compiling. Yeah. So hopefully he's, he's compiling this because right now you got some good video of me reading the ordinance to you. Showing you what the ordinance says, it was updated two years ago. So, if, but, but more than two years ago, my friend won a lawsuit. I know. So, I know. so you, you're you're infringement of that lawsuit so, already. But, but you know what? I'm, I'm well aware of law, lawsuits. Each lawsuit is a different tort in itself, of circumstances behind it, what's been said, and how it's approached. Okay, but, the, but I understand. This is my friend. I know him right, personally. Right, right, right. The issue with that thing, mm -hmm. with not it's just being on property, right. it was preaching with amplification. Right. He won the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So you guys should not have right. a policy right. that infringes right. upon that lawsuit, what the right. court said in the lawsuit. As far as the specific wording of what the lawsuit said, I'm not familiar with it. I know about it. Well, I got it on my computer at home. Right, I, can right. look, I can look it up. Three. But I'm not going to stand here and tell you the wrong thing. To put myself in jeopardy. Oh, no, I'm not trying to get you in trouble, okay. sir. There's nothing personal. Copy, on your way up, we got uh, several limousines parked in the right curb lane. Let's go ahead and get them uh, cleared so we can utilize this lane for vehicles turning right on international. So, yeah, so I'm and not... It's nothing personal, right, Major, I understand. I, I know it's not... It's I'm not, not against you. Right. I understand that. Right. I, I, I have this on at all times right. when I'm out preaching right. because and, of my own protection. Right, and that, uh, for me, it's protection sure, too. Sure, sure. Because I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. Yeah, it's an objective, I, it's an objective right. witness, yep. so... So, I'm going to read the ordinance to you. Read it to you verbatim. Okay. Let you know that you're in violation. Okay. That's all I'm gonna do. Okay. For right now. Thank you, Major. However, again, with repeated violations of the ordinance, I do have an option to cite you for criminal trespass. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, if it comes to that, I hope it doesn't. If it comes I, to that, we'll deal with it when it does. It doesn't. That's we'll the only thing comes. I've been asking is for your compliance. That's well, all what's, once again, the Major, I can't comply to that infringement upon my freedom of belief, okay. freedom of religion. So, so you two are refusing to comply with the state order? Yes, sir. Yeah. Best yeah. Is that all infringes upon a lawsuit has already been won. Okay. No, no problem. So it's, it's no really kind of almost like a tip of the day to me. Okay. Right. You know? No problem. No problem. Sir. What I'm going to do, since I, I've had this discussion, yep. I've called it into our command center. They're well aware. Yes, sir. Chief knows. He's talked to Pargin. I've got to do a report that I did talk to you. If you mind giving you information, all I need is your name, address, and I can do a report. Okay. So, okay. And I'll be glad to give you a card when I finish. So, appreciate you. Yeah. I believe I've spoken to you before. Yes, sir. Over at uh, State Farm Drive. Yes, sir. Yeah. We talked over there before when I had problems with your sergeant over there. Right, right. The same guy I'm talking about. Right, right. I was actually across from the Georgia World Congress Center. He's still giving me problems. Right, right. I'm going to give you my car uh, when we finish. Uh -huh. If you have any issues of anything that you think okay. is out of the ordinary, just give me a call. But just, just so I understand you, so as far as your policies, if right. I'm actually over at the Mercedes, Mercedes Benz Stadium right. and I have a two by three foot sign right. and I'm not using amplification, I'm handing out tracks and preaching right. with my bare voice, they can't right. stop me. So you're telling me. If you got a two by three sign. Two by three. Mm -hmm. And I'm passing out tracks and using my right, bare right. voice to preach. They can't right. tell me I can't leave. Right. Right? They have to leave me alone. I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to read that thoroughly as far as the okay. state has been stated. All right. So. Appreciate you guys' patience, though. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, patience is the fruit of the Spirit. Right, right. We're followers of Jesus. All righty. So I'm making note that you gentlemen, I read the ordinance to you, and you gentlemen are refusing to comply with our ordinance, but just keep in mind, uh, it may get to a point where I can't cite you for criminal trespassing or repeated violations of the ordinance. I really don't want to get to that point. Uh, I want to work with you all to get you in a designated area without the violation of the signs and without violation of the so I really don't want to get to that point. Because me, I think we're well within my right as a law enforcement officer. Once I read the orders to somebody, to cite you for criminal trespassing. At this time, I'm not going to do that. And it's, it's like you said, it's your option if you want to have a civil lawsuit. I can't stop you from doing that. Well, but I think as a law enforcement officer, once I read somebody the ordinance, that's in black or white. For the but Georgia Major, when, when, the, when the lawsuit's already been won, I mean, all they're going to do, if, I, if this goes to court, 
all they're going to do is refer back to the one that's already been but, won, right, and right. they're going to apply Olympic Park to but, over here. But every lawsuit is a different tort in itself. This it's the same situation. It's every lawsuit it's is a different tort. Public property. Right, but, I, but I think as a law enforcement officer, once I read somebody the law, an ordinance, it's within my right to take action after that. I at think, this time, I think I, it's... At, at this time, Mr. Skelly, yeah. Matthew, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Okay? I'm not, at this time, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Uh, as long as you well aware of what the ordinance say, I'd be glad to make you copies. You probably don't need it. You probably don't need it. No, as long sir. as you know you're in violation. All right. Does the gentleman have any questions? Anything for me? Just say that, that the ordinance is violation of my freedom of religion and freedom of speech. Uh, I understand that. Yes, sir. I understand that. And it's a lot of laws and ordinances in, in this country that people say it's a violation of the Constitution or their freedom of speech. That's something we leave up to the courts. Nine times out of ten, 99.9% of the time, they are in favor of the local ordinance and local laws. No, it's actually not true, sir. I've I won three lawsuits. So, All right. so that's not true. It. All right. Well, gentlemen, I'll let you continue Thank you, right sir. now. But like I said, keep in mind there's an option for criminal trespass. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. All right, Major. Okay. Thank you. You have a good day. Hey, guys, in the limos. Can I get you from your limo? All right. Oh, right off. Yeah. Can I get you I'm a, if you don't want to preach, I'll preach again. Oh, you're still going to preach? Oh, yeah, I'm still going to preach. I'm not stopping preaching. Yeah, we're not arguing. Yeah. 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 Y
What about Roll Tide and Go Jesus? No, no. You cannot serve two masters. Either love the one and hate the other, be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and the dogs. You cannot serve God in the crimson tide. He deserves and commands your complete allegiance and loyalty. Jesus Christ. He commands your complete allegiance and loyalty. To have nothing else in your heart demanding and commanding your attention. Jesus Christ deserves priority and preeminence in your life. Jesus Christ. He loves you at the cross, and he commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Get right with God. Turn from your sin. Turn to Jesus while you still can. Your life is but a vapor. It appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. Your life is going to vanish away. Your life could vanish away today. You could perish today. You could die tomorrow. You could die this, this year. But this is you're living a very dangerous life in sin, getting drunk. It's a wickedness. There's no security. There's no safety in sin. There's no security. There's no safety in sin. There's only security and safety in Jesus. And to get in Jesus, to be in Jesus, you must repent. You must give up your sins. You must go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Lest a worse thing come upon you. You're in a dangerous place. There's never any kind of safety in sin. The Bible says, though a sinner does evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, and I surely know it will be well with those who fear God, who fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked, nor will he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he does not fear before God. See, safety and security is only in fearing God and keeping his commandments. And the Bible says this is man's all, to fear God and keep his commandments. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Love God, keep his commandments, turn from sin. That's your only hope. It's amazing how much effort people will put into their favorite team. They'll drive around with huge flags on their cars and wear their jerseys and their shirts and their hats and, and put you know paint on their face and, and cheer for them and spend hundreds of dollars for tickets. They'll do all these things for their favorite team. But the one who loved them at the cross, who died for them, they reject, they spurn, they're apathetic towards, they will not point. love and obey. You got a point. You got a point. Yeah. What I say is more about, I don't know. I don't know if this is the best approach. Feel well, like, this is the approach of the scripture, sir. No, I understand what you're doing. It is, it's, 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 it's valuable. But I feel like relationships, I feel like relationships build more confidence towards trying to reach Well, Jesus didn't Christ didn't say go into all the world and make relationships. He said go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. So I'm not going to take your advice, sir. I'm doing this based upon God's word. God bless you too with repentance and faith and repent and holiness. So it's not about a relationship with people that were preached to them, sir. I don't have to have a relationship to preach to people, sir. God commands me to preach. You command me to have relationship. Who do you think I'm going to obey? I'm going to obey Jesus. He wants all the world to hear his truth. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How can they believe and will not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? That's what the scripture says. The Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the word in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. This is what the scripture says. So when you come to me with some other kind of philosophy, some other kind of uh, method of getting people saved, I reject it because the word of God says otherwise. The word of God teaches us to do it this way. And the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God. The power of God is available to you if you'll repent. The power of God is available to you if you repent. The power of God changed me 24 and a half years ago. 
I was wicked. I was a fornicator, a drunkard, a liar, a thief, a covetous person. And God changed me. In a moment of time, God changed me. He delivered me. He made me a new creature in Christ. And if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All the old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. And Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be born again or you cannot see the kingdom of God. You understand? Your, your church going, your denomination allegiance, uh, your being raised a certain way with Christian morals will not save you. You need the grace of God found, in the cro found through the cross of Jesus Christ and the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking forward to the blessed hope and the glorious, talking about Jesus, sinner, the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. It's amazing all the cheering that goes on by 75,000 people for men in tights running around with an inflated pigskin trying to cross the white line or kick it between two yellow poles. That's what all the fuss is about? This is what you spend hundreds of dollars on? That's what you spend it on? That's what's so exciting to you? When Jesus Christ parts the sky, and he shines it like lightning from the east to the west, and every eye sees him, that will be exciting. That will be, mir that will be miraculous. That will be wonderful. Jesus Christ. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He calls, he calls you to repentance. Follow him. Obey him. Serve him. He's the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Yeah, I'm done. I just wanted to go to 4 o'clock, so. Huh? I just wanted to go to the 4 o'clock. I think we've gone that far now. It's 1604. 404. Yeah. How are you? Good. I've seen you before. Oh, yeah? You haven't seen me, but. <laughs> okay. What's your name? Uh, James Kim. James yeah. Kerrigan. Good to see you. You too. Yeah, I heard, I've seen you on a YouTube before, okay. and I was uh, very encouraged. And so I was like, oh, I've seen him before. <laughs> yes, yeah, I talked to uh, brothers there. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. really thankful to see so many out here trying to labor for the gospel. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Amen. Especially with this, everything going on here, 75,000 people. Yeah. Need a lot of like, a lot of laborers for that. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you for all the laborers. Do you live in this area? Uh, I'm from Memphis. Oh, okay. What brings you over here? Just uh, this event? Just for the uh, gospel. Uh, okay. We're going to be here, and we found out there's an NBA game tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a uh, college football. So we're yeah. we're here to share the gospel. Okay, great. And yeah. there's how many how many of you came from Memphis? We uh, There's four of us. The other guys are over there. Are you with the guys who had the really black and white tall signs? No, I, okay. I talked to them. They're from Greenville, South Carolina. Right. Uh, yeah, Faith Baptist. Eric okay. and uh, them, so yeah, I'm okay. not with them, but I talked with them before. Okay. Are you guys done for today? Yeah, we're done for today. I got your website, but I, I've known your website before, so okay. I may reach out. Okay, but, sure. Uh, yeah. it's really your name was you. again, James Kim. James Kim, okay. Yeah. So I remember that. I'll, 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 I'll try to remember that. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to tell you, I was very encouraged uh, on your YouTubes. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. It's encouraging to me. Yeah. It's good to see your family laboring together. I have yeah. five children too, and I'm praying about my oldest. He's about to turn 13. Okay. So I've been traveling this year for the gospel. This is my ninth city. Okay. So I'm praying about taking him along on, on our trips. Uh, he's growing in the Lord, yeah. uh, in the grace and in the word. I mean, his, uh, his scripture memory and all that yeah. is going really strong. So, yes, but it's encouraging to see, yeah. you know, if we can allow children to watch TV, 
there's more stuff on the TV that should be concerning. Yeah. And why can't they labor for the kingdom of God and uh, the spread of the good news of the Lord Jesus? Exactly right. Yeah, I have eight, I have eight children. And they've all been yeah. out with me before. Okay. All of them have, so. They're all, my, even my youngest became a follower of Jesus not too long ago, so. So, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I heard it and I uh, thought of it. So, you said, uh, part of what you said was that you got to come out of denominations. So, are you now. No, I, did, I didn't say that. I, I was simply saying that a denomination won't save you. Okay, okay. People, gotcha. people cling to their sure, sure. denomination and think that that's salvation. Yeah, yeah. But Going that's not to salvation. church membership or something like that. Obviously, I believe you should be a part of a local church Absolutely. that's biblical and godly and has good leadership, teaches sound doctrine, that's cares right. about the law, so obeys God. It's all things every believer should be involved in. That's right. Is that it's about a part it? Of, uh, body of Christ, local that's right. body. What, uh, so Maranatha Fellowship, is that's it right. non-denominational or do that's you guys? That's right, okay, non-denominational. Gotcha. We're a house church too, uh, a okay. non-denominational house church. Okay, in yeah. Memphis. We, we have about uh, 40, 50 of us gathered together to believe the Bible, follow the Bible. Okay, good. Uh, follow the Lord Jesus, so. Praise God. Yeah, um, I'm very encouraged to see you and uh, see your ministry and being willing to get on the street and preach. And, yeah. yeah. Praise God, thank you for your labor too. Uh, no. Appreciate that. Yeah. More and more and more labor. The, the harvest is is white. We need laborers, man. Amen. More and more, like like Luke 10 too. Like Jesus said in Luke 10 too. We need more laborers. Amen. As many as possible. Your son, whoever. Yeah. And as long as they're following Jesus Christ, walk in obedience to Him, and they're born again. Yeah. And to be out here doing it, man. Yeah, that's right. Even if they're young. Thank you for a good example. Amen. All right. God, God bless, bless you, man. you. Good meeting you again. God, good God to meet you. you. God bless you guys too.